Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the murdered confessor. A thrilling counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings, recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks. Pepsi Cola won out. You get the best and twice as much in delicious Pepsi Cola. And now to Counter Spy. On a side street in Washington, D.C., a man walked slowly along, clutching a paper bag and peering at the numbers on the doorways. Suddenly, he stopped, mounted the stairs of a shabby-looking house, and pushed the bell marked Dr. Gregor. Yes? Is Dr. Gregor in? Have you an appointment with him? No. I have suddenly become ill. I have eaten too much candy. What kind of candy was it? Turkish candy. Oh? What is it called? Halva. Just a moment. Yes? Dr. Gregor, there's a man here. He says he's ill from eating too much candy. I think you'll want to see him. Send him in, Sonia. Go right in, please. Thank you. Dr. Gregor? Yes? I have eaten too much of my native candy. What kind of candy did you eat? Turkish candy. Halva. Oh. You are Bulov, eh? Yes. When did you arrive? Last night in the United States, an hour ago in Washington. Sit down. You have your instructions? All but the time and the place. So. Murak will arrive at the same airfield on which you landed. At three this afternoon. I shall be there. You must not fail. In my business, one cannot fail. I have practiced it all over the world. Good. That is all, Bulov. Goodbye, doctor. Long live... Shut up. And get out. Yes, of course. Yes, Dr. Kreger. Come in here, Jensen. Well, did you get his picture, Jensen? Yes, yeah, several. All right. Develop them at once. And then study them carefully. Yes, sir. Wait. Yes. It is a uniform of the Washington police force. Yes, doctor. You will put it on and go to the airport. Yes, doctor. Pose as one of the policemen guarding the crowd. But make certain to be near the man whose picture you have just taken. Yes, doctor. After he has done his work, shoot him. Remember, he too cannot leave that airfield alive. And this is your radio reporter, Ben Pervin, broadcasting from the airfield in Washington, D.C. We're awaiting the arrival of Igor Murak, the diplomat who escaped from behind the Iron Curtain and fled to the American sector in Berlin just three days ago. 
He's been rushed to the United States, as you know, by a special plane. I see an official automobile of the State Department has just driven up, and now some important officials are going out onto the field. And here's the plane, ladies and gentlemen, coming in for a landing now. In just a moment, we'll see the man who dared to renounce his country and flee to the protection of the West. The plane is now slowing down near the little knot of government officials out there, crowds being held back by police. And now the plane has finally ground to a stop. Reporters and photographers are starting to race out onto the field. Attendants are rolling portable stairs up to the plane. The door is opening, and Mr. Murak is stepping out, waving his hat to the crowd. Photographers' bulbs are popping. Movie cameras are running. A shot! Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Murak has just been shot! Harding. Wherever my assistant, Harry Peters, is in Counter Spy Headquarters, drop what you're doing and check local police precinct 17. Police badge number 7683W. Then meet me outside the State Department building with my car. That is all. Sit down, Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. You know, of course, Murak is dead. Yes, I got the report just before I came over. It's a heavy blow. He had invaluable information for us. Acting on it, we might have been able to safeguard the peace of the world for years. Well, they were determined that it not get to us. There were seven counterspies at the airfield besides the regular local police detachment. Determined and desperate. We've got to catch them and catch them fast. We'll do our best, of course. Harding, we must prove to the world that people can come over to the camp of free men and come over safely. Well, I'll take charge of this case personally, Mr. Secretary. Good. We'll let you know the moment anything breaks. Somewhere behind that iron curtain, Mr. Harding, other men are waiting to exchange information for freedom. But now they'll wait to see whether we can protect them. We've got to convince them we can. Over here, Dave. All right, Peter. Did you check the police precinct? Yes. Dave, there is no such police badge as 7683W in Washington. Mm -hmm. I talked with the captain who assigned that detail of men to the airfield, and he's positive that the man must have joined the squad after they got to the field. What about the men? Well, I talked with every one of them. Now, none of them ever remember seeing him before. He was a phony cop, Dave. I thought so. Where to now? General Hospital. The assassin who shot Murox there. All right. Get in the car, Dave. Have you given orders to round up all the known foreign agents? No, we know where to find them when we want them. They're too smart to have anyone who's been operating in this country for any length of time do this job. They wouldn't take that chance. Figure the fellow who killed Murak is from outside the country. Hmm? That's my hunch. What about the phony cop? We'll get to him later. Was Murak's assassin badly wounded, Dave? Unconscious when they took him off the field. You better go a little faster, then. That's a good idea. Use that siren. Yes, sir, except for the reporters. Oh? They've gone over to your office to get a story from you, Mr. Harding. Good, that'll keep him busy for a while. How is he, Stephen? I don't know, Peters. The doctor's in the room with the assassin now. Come on, Peters, we'll go inside. All right. I remember, Stephen, nobody gets inside but the hospital staff. Yes, sir. I'm David Harding, Dr. Harris. This is my assistant, Mr. Peters. Oh, glad to know you, gentlemen. Can we speak to him, Doctor? Well, I'm afraid not, Mr. Harding. Is he still unconscious? No, but one of the bullets tore away his larynx. He'll never talk again. Mm. Do you think he'll live? Well, it's a little early to say. He's rallied pretty well under the plasma and the transfusions we've given him. Well, he's a very important prisoner, Doctor. At the moment, the most important we have. Yes, I understand, Mr. Harding. We'll do our best. Well, one of our men will be in constant attendance, Doctor. I'm afraid I'll have to ask him to stay out in the anteroom, Mr. Harding. Well, that's all right, Doctor. Thank you. Come on, Peter. Good day, Doctor. Good day, gentlemen. Bye. Now, Peters, you stay here in the hospital. I want you to handle things from this end. I'm going back to the office. If anything breaks, I'll get in touch with you. Right, Chief. Come on, Stevens. Let's get back to the office. I've got work to do. Sonia. Jensen. 
Dr. Greg Ronin? Inside. We were listening to the radio. And he knows, huh? Yes. Well, it couldn't be helped. You'd better go into him. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave this package here. Well, Jensen. Doctor, I want... You bungling fool, he's still alive. It couldn't be helped. That is no excuse. I shot him three times. The man must be made of iron. Then you should have shot him four, five, six times if necessary. I tried, but a counter-spy grabbed me. Had a hard time getting away in the excitement. Uh, He's got to be put away. That man cannot be allowed to live. Maybe he's dead by now. The radio just announced that he is alive, but cannot talk. It gives us a little time yet. They might be lying. These capitalist simpletons are too naive to lie. They worship gossip under the guise of freedom of the press. Well, what do you propose we do, Doctor? Shut up! I'm trying to think. Did you get rid of that police uniform? It's outside. You fool. Put it in the furnace. Yes, sir. Wait. I'm not finished with you. Are you recognized by that counter spy? No, I'm sure of that. Good. Now listen to me. They have taken him to General Hospital. You will have to go there and finish the job. They won't let me in to see him, will they? Of course not, you idiot. There will undoubtedly be a guard there. I don't see how you I can... will have to pose as a hospital orderly and gain admittance to his room that way. After you have dispatched him, come back here. All right, sir. Here, take this knife. And do your work quietly. But this time, Jensen, do not bungle it. Or else you will be sent back to answer to the Central Committee itself. Just a moment. Hmm? Where are you going? Uh, I must tend the patient in this room. Are you a doctor? An orderly. And you? I'm his guard. Oh. What are you going to do for him? Well, he's got to have another transfusion. I thought only doctors gave transfusions. Well, practically a doctor. You know how to give a transfusion? During the war, I gave thousands of them. I was with the medical corps. I see. Well, if the doctors think it's okay, I suppose it's all right. Thank you. You'll uh, see that I'm not disturbed, won't you? A patient as ill as he is must have absolute quiet when he gets a transfusion. Sure. I'll see that no one gets in. That's what I'm here for. Well, thank you. So soon? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the plasma is going in on now. Well, where are you going? For more plasma. I'll return in just a moment. Meanwhile, make certain that no one enters that room. If he did, it'd be fatal. Peters to Harding. Peters to Harding. Harding to Peters. What is it, Peters? It went just as we planned it, Dave. Good. Where are you? In my car, C Street, Northwest. I trailed suspect one here. He's going into a Dr. Gregor's office at number 23 and a half. Good work, Peters. I'm going into the doctor's office myself, Dave. Well, give us ten minutes before you do. We'll cover you. Oh, anything else? Yes. There's an automobile parked across the street with a doctor's emblem on it. I figure it's Dr. Gregor's car. It's been there for hours. I checked for dust and tire marks. And Dave... Yes? Before I go in, I'm going to put this walkie-talkie under the rear end of that car... I'll set it on continuous wave oscillation, so if anyone leaves in the car and we want to follow, the boys can pick it up with a direction finder. Good. Now, Peters, are you going to pose as a patient? Yes. Then park your gun. The doctor may examine you. You don't want to arouse suspicion. All right, Dave. Tell me, have you got a cover on the hospital? Yes. Now, synchronize your watch with mine. You ready? Ready. Fourteen and a half coming up. Three, two, one, woof. Check. Remember, don't start for ten minutes. Right. Good hunting, Peters, and watch your step. I know, Dave. These fellows are playing for keeps. In a moment, back to Counter Spy, presented by delicious Pepsi Cola. Have you heard about those tests by that famous laboratory? Have you heard the latest news in the Pepsi-Cola story? Yes, there's big news about Pepsi. The cola you've always known was most delicious, the cola you've always known was best value, is now shown to be the cola of proven highest quality. That's right. 
The U.S. Testing Company, Incorporated, reports you get more quick food energy, more quick food energy, ounce for ounce, in delicious Pepsi-Cola than any other nationally known leading cola drink. Yes, your Pepsi is really top. Tastes the top, is the top, and gives the most. So go ahead, enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. Insist on it wherever you may be. When you stop at the fountain, make sure you say... Pepsi, please. When you stop at a stand, make sure you say... Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big 12-ounce bottles. Pepsi's six bottles serve 12 refreshing glassfuls. Twice as much. So save money and get the best. Come on, sing the Pepsi song with us. Pepsi Cola, it's the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi Cola is a drink for you. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Now back to Counter Spy. David Harding's assistant, Harry Peters, has just trailed a fake medical orderly to the office of the doctor. And now, posing as a patient, he has gone in himself. Uh, could I see the doctor, please? Do you have an appointment? No. I'm sorry, but the doctor sees see patients only by appointment. Well, Miss, I, I feel pretty sick, and I was in hopes What that... is it, Sonia? Dr. Gregor, this gentleman wants to see you. I told him you saw patients only by appointment. What is wrong, my friend? Well, doctor, I, I was walking along the street, and suddenly I got very dizzy. I, I thought I was going to faint, so Perhaps I... you had better come in and let me have a look at you. Thank you. See that we are not disturbed, Sonia. Yes, doctor. Now, suppose you tell me about this dizziness. Well, as I said, it, it just came on me all of a sudden. I was, I was just walking along and suddenly I got very dizzy. Had you ever experienced this condition before? No. Hmm. Would you remove your coat, please? All right. You can hang it on the back of that chair, then. Thank you. You know, a dizziness such as you have just experienced could have been caused by a constriction of the blood vessels because of some weight. Say, for instance, a shoulder holster and gun, which I notice you are not wearing as usual, Mr. Peters. You know me, hmm? Do you take us for fools? Do not move, my friend. It would prove fatal for you and embarrassing for me. Jensen! You bungler! Do you see now whom you have brought to our nest? The hospital guard. Hospital guard, nothing. He's Peters of the counter spies. I didn't know he was following me, Dr. Gregor. Uh, you'd never know anything. We've got to get out of here. Inform Sonia and then bring the car around to the alley. Wait. Give me your gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, quick. Yes. Running won't do any good, Gregor. We're bound to get you. Yes, that is a matter of speculation, Peter. Right now, I have you. Though I would rather have your superior, Harding. I guess you would. Someday I shall, my friend. Jensen has the car at the side door, Doctor. All right, good. Get my doctor's case on. Make sure it has a hypodermic in it. Here it is. Good. Oh, look in that cabinet. You will see a vial there. The one marked S.A.? Yes, put it in the case. Anything else? No, that's all. Are you ready to leave with us? Yes. All right. Put on your coat, Peter. Where are we going? For a drive. All set, Dr. Gregor? No, not just yet, Jensen. Open the top drawer of that steel file. Yes. There are some long cylinders there. I got them. All right. Put one in the outer office. Unscrew the cap when you do. I will do the same with one here. Then let us get out. We haven't much time. As you walked, when suddenly flame shot out of a window. I ran for the fire box. It was a block and a half away. When I came back here after notifying you. Peters was in that building. Peters? Where's the fire chief? Right over there. Come on. Please let me through here. Chief. Yes? Yes? I'm David Harding, counter spies. One of my men was in that building. Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Harding. Well, he wasn't when we went in. My men went through it from top to bottom. Oh, well, did you see anything of a car in front of the place when your men came up? They'd moved that car to the alley, Mr. Harding. I watched them. The man who moved it went back into the house. Then they must have been getting ready for a getaway. They set the fire and left while you turned in the alarm. Yes, it was set, all right. From my war experience, I'd say that fire was set with magnesium. Well, Chief, we'd like to go through the building when you've got the fire out. Well, if there's anything left, Mr. Harding... Thanks. I'll leave some men with you. Come on, Stephen. Where to, Mr. Harding? Back to my car. I want to call for some men. And then get on that direction finder. Just up ahead, Jensen. Turn into that private road. Yes, sir. All right, Peter. Get out. Sonia, bring my case, please. Yes, Dr. Gregor. Jensen, put the car in the barn and then join us inside. Right, Doctor. All right. Come along, Peter. Inside, fast. Ah, take that chair, Peter. The straight back one. As you say. Jensen, you have come just in time. Tie him to that chair. Yes, sir. If you struggle, Peters, I will shoot you. I know when I'm licked. You are a wise man, my friend. Sonia, prepare that hypodermic with the fluid from that vial you took out of the chair. What is it, Dr. Gregor? Sodium amital, the so-called truth serum. When he gets a shot of it, he won't be able to help himself. He will talk. It's all tied, Dr. Gregor. Good. Here's the hypodermic, Doctor. All loaded. Thank you. Uh, hold my gun, Sonia. Now, Peters, this won't hurt a bit. You see? That is all, Peter. Now we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, your eyelids are beginning to droop. Good. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's it, Peter. Relax. Take it easy. That's it. Now, Peter, how did you know Jensen? Watch. Where? Hospital. Where did you watch in the hospital? Outside the door. A wounded man. Ah. What did you see Jensen do? Go inside. Did you see what he did when he went inside? Yes. So, you saw him kill Bullock? No. What? No. Didn't you see him stab Bullock? He didn't stab Bullock. He's lying, Dr. Gregor. I stabbed him six times in a half. Shut up, Jensen. Who did he stab, Peters? No one. Doctor, I tell you... Shut up, you fool. What did he do, Peter? Stab... Dummy. A dummy? Jensen, you will pay for this. Said you shut up. Peter, where was Bullock? Moved. Moved to... other room. And you put a dummy in his room? Yes. Why? Fool you. You knew we were coming after Bullock? Yes. How? Broadcast reports of Olaf's improvement. You tricked us into believing he was better, huh? Yes. How did you know we would come to kill him? Harding figured you would. Too dangerous to live. These dogs are smarter than I thought. Peter, where is Harding? Peter, answer me. Where is Harding? On way here. Here? How would he know where to find us? Follow frequency signal. Where is the signal? On your car. Jensen. Yes, Sonia. We will have to leave here immediately and get out of the country, too. They know us. We can be of no further use to the call. But, Doctor, the only one who knows us who's seen us is here. Yes, you are right. Give me the gun, Sonia. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Gregor. You killed Jensen. Oh, 
He bungled the thing from the beginning. But, Peter... I will kill him a different way. Give me the hypodermic. Will that sodium amatol kill him, too? No, I have something better. Stand where you are. What? Put up your hand. Oh. You'll be able to take me! All right, miss. Put up your hand. You'll never make me talk. We won't have to. We heard the whole thing. And Gregor is only wounded. He'll talk. A man like him always does. Chief, we better get Peters untied. Uh, just a moment, Stevens. He's still under the influence of the drug. This is an opportunity I'll never have again. Peters, where were you on the night of June 13th? Uh, no, you better not answer that, Peters. On time, Stephen. Let's go. Well, that takes care of an international intrigue. Now let's take care of the refreshments. Bring on those big, big Pepsis and have delicious Pepsi-Cola all around. Mmm, tastes good. You just can't match Pepsi's fresh, tangy flavor. And there's plenty for two of you in Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottles. Get Pepsi by the carton. It's six bottles, but 12 drinks. So save all that money and enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. Remember, Pepsi's proven highest quality. Yet it gives you twice as much. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Tuesday for the exciting case of the soaring saucer. When old-fashioned smuggling methods failed, modern minds turned to science to put new wings on crime, to send illegal merchandise flying through space. For the amazing report of how your counter-spies solved the riddle, listen on Tuesday for... The Case of the Soaring Saucer on counter Five. <laughs> Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York, was directed by Mark B. Loeb, dramatized by Bud Fischel, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight. Uh-huh.